Destiny Sharks forward Fabian Zetterlin joins the show. We talk about his road to San Jose, the trade, and get to know him off the ice a little bit. So all that and more on today's episode. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network recovery, your team every day. And today we have a special, special treat. Uh, Sharks forward Fabian Zetterlin joins the show where we kind of just get to know Zettel a little bit, get to know him off the ice, his journey to uh, the San Jose Sharks. We talk about the trade. We talk about the big news between uh, with Hurdle and Kotor being out for the next couple of weeks. So uh, fun show with Zettel. And before we get into all that, do want to know today's episode is brought to you guys by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit fanduelcom slash locked on to get started. And now I'm joined by Sharks forward Fabian Zetterlin. Uh, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing great. I uh, got home from practice. So, yeah, uh, just chilling in the couch. Uh, a couple more days until you guys head up to Winnipeg, where I'm sure it's like a thousand degrees colder up there than it is right now in, in uh, the Bay Area. But I uh, wanted to get you on to kind of talk about your path to San Jose. So uh, first thing I ask is, when did you realize like hockey could be a thing for you? Oh, that's a great question. Um, my my dad started everything. He went, he brought me to the rink when I was like uh, three years old or something. And uh Put me on the skate there, and uh, yeah, I uh, I I loved it, and I uh, started playing in a team when I was five, and my dad was my coach too, and uh, yeah, on that way it is, and uh, and uh, yeah, he he took care of me, my whole family, mom, uh, mom, dad, uh, my grandparents too, helped me with the uh, with rides and stuff to the rink uh, after school and stuff. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a long. Uh, uh long carry so far but uh, hopefully longer to go so uh, yeah um uh, when i realized i could be like a pro hockey player was i mean nhl was my dream because mm-hmm. i watched a lot of hockey when i was young and watched a lot of nhl um but uh yeah when i realized i could could play make it to pro hockey then i probably was around 15 14 maybe uh Start playing my first pro hockey game when I was uh, late 16 or something, I think I was. Um, so, yeah, uh, then, then it was just, yeah, that was how it is. Um, growing up in Sweden, who was your favorite player growing up? I know a lot of you guys pick Eric Carlson, uh, but who was, who was your guy? Uh, that was uh, Ovechkin. Uh, Ovechkin? Uh, yeah, I was a big, uh, big Capitals fan uh, in my back in the days, but I uh, and the Westkin was a big piece of it. So uh, I liked his his style, you know, how he played. I think I looked looked like exactly like him uh, on the ice when I was younger. You know, the yellow laces and uh, the tape job and uh, all this kind of stuff. So yeah, I I uh, that's what was my idol when I was back in the days. Yeah. That's a pretty good choice. Uh, Vechkin's not, that's that's a good choice to pick. If you're going to try to be anybody, try to be a Vechkin because, yeah, he looks yeah. like he has – I don't think there's many people who look like they have as much fun on the ice as a Vechkin. He he looks like every time he goes on the ice, it's like his, his first time playing. So, um, who – which player do you think you try to – kind of as you grow up and became, you know, uh, became a pro player, who did you try to kind of model your game after or who even nowadays you try to kind of pull from? <clears throat> I mean, back in the days, it was a Wetchkin. Uh, yeah. I watched everything. Everything is <laughs> like highlights and stuff. And uh, I like love to score goals. I did it when I was younger too. And uh, and uh, his celebration and all this kind of stuff too. And I, just uh, watching him was uh, yeah fantastic. And I wanted to do everything he does, you know. And, uh, right now, I'm just uh, 
you know, when you're getting older, uh, you're trying to find your own style. And uh, I find my own style and I just, uh, yeah, work on things I have to get better at and uh, just do it uh, uh, with my own style. I enjoy how you you act like you're like 30 years old, but you're 24 acting like this old man bigger. But uh, yeah. I know hockey, it's a much different age. So um, going back to your draft, the 2019 draft, you were the first pick in the third round. What was your draft experience like? Did you have a feeling where you might get drafted? Did you have a feeling with the teens? Like kind of going into the draft, how did you feel about, about you getting drafted at all? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I I had a couple meetings with uh, with a lot of teams, uh, and I was just happy to get picked. Uh, I didn't really think about it that much because my agent told me to stay at home in Sweden, and uh, mm. and I did that too, and I watched it with my family and stuff. Um, uh, so, and then the second day, everything went so fast, you know, and then I didn't realize I went. Uh, I think it was my friend was sitting beside me and was like, oh, there's your name. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, New, Jersey, New Jersey called me like 10 minutes after or something. And um, yeah, preparing for dev camp or what it was. So yeah, it was nice. It's a bit of a whirlwind, right? You get drafted and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're at dev camp and all that that crazy stuff. It's kind of, it is kind of crazy, like seeing the uh, how, how quickly it just processes for you guys. And then I think by the time you get home from dev camp, you probably take a breath and you're like, oh, I just got drafted, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, just come over to US, you know, from Sweden. It's pretty big and the uh, mm-hmm. Uh, language and uh, all this kind of stuff. It is. Uh, it's. It's pretty hard. I mean, you. You don't really know anything. You. Yeah. Hope, hopefully, another Swede. Swede is there too, so you can uh, chit chat with him. You know, and uh, uh, I, I had a couple of Swedes in New Jersey already, so that was. Uh, that was, that helped me a lot, and uh, yeah, uh, that I remember my first dev camp, and that was pretty cool to walk in into the NHL locker room and see how everything was there. So yeah, it was it was nice. Um, in your draft was one Jacob Peterson, a fellow Swede, um, who was also acquired by the Sharks at the trade deadline last night. Did you guys uh, kind of know each other a little bit, being in the same draft class, kind of the same age? Yeah, I mean, we played the national team together a couple times uh, back in the days. And uh, I think he played uh, two years maybe in, in my hometown. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, we knew each other a little bit from uh, from back in the days. So, yeah, we did. Was it kind of weird, like running into each other in the hall? And you know, because you did play a couple of games with the Sharks last year, he's been playing with the Barracuda this year. Was it kind of weird just running into each other again? Ah, oh, it was just nice to see each other again, you know, and uh, get the a familiar get the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's always it's always nice. Um. You after you got drafted and you were playing in Sweden, you tore your ACL. Uh, what is the kind of? I always am curious like, on with athletes when they have those major injuries, to kind of the, the rehab and the recovery, and even like the mental part of going through uh, something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was it was hard. Uh, I was uh, on a contract uh, with my team back home in Sweden, and uh, uh, I remember I tore my ACL and. Uh, they looked at it and they said, "Yeah, it's, I did an MRI and everything." And they saw my ACL was was broke. And then uh, <clears throat> I was on contract with them. With them, and I was, uh, they was telling me like, "Yeah, six weeks, then you're playing again." So I was like, "Yeah, right, okay, let's go." And then I, I remember I played um, World Juniors that year too, and uh, I came back and I played a couple of games, and then I think New Jersey w- weren't that happy about it, but. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, but they couldn't do really do anything because I had a contract uh, back home, and uh, yeah. But then all of a sudden everything went well, and I did the surgery in February, I think, uh, or something. And then I went back on the ice uh, uh, on the training camp, and uh, yeah, it was tough times. But uh, I'm I'm glad I did it uh, because now I'm uh, I don't feel it anymore. Knock on the wood, but. Yeah, it's not going to wood. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know those those the ACLs. They usually say after you have it repaired, it's pretty hard to. It's rare. It still happens, but it's rare for it to get to get torn again. So, um, you came over to the U.S. and started playing the AHL. What was the big difference between uh, for you, kind of playing on the smaller ice uh, compared to playing in Sweden? Yeah, I mean, first of all, the tempo was was high. You know, smaller rink. Uh, 
you can almost shoot from everywhere in the in the ozone, and uh, we kind of like that. Uh, <laughs> remember when I played played a couple couple games with the national team in US? It, it mm-hmm. was great. I was enjoying it. You know, uh, uh, don't have to skate that much. You know, in in Sweden you can use the ice way more, and even in the summer sometimes when we skate the group back home, uh, you get more tired. The rink is so big, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I definitely like it, and now I'm used to it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, should be it should be NHL uh, size everywhere. Uh, you're right. Just because I mean, us Americans, we're typically lazy, right? I don't want to, have to skate all the way across. That's too much skating, right? Uh, <laughs> that's why we make it smaller, more efficient. Um, all right, guys, before we continue with Zerlin, we talk about, of course, the trade that brought him to San Jose, uh, kind of going through that, talk about him and the bond uh, with him and Eklund. Uh, just need to take a quick break. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Um, I always just like to bet on Steph Curry doing awesome Steph Curry things. So maybe taking the over on threes, especially because Curry's been super hot recently. Um, taking that over on threes, maybe the over on points with Curry. Because again, watching Steph Curry do Steph Curry things uh, and then make some money on top of it seems like a great night to me. So just visit fanduelcom slash Locked on to shoot your shot. Vandal, official sports book partner of the NBA. That's a terrible joke. So uh, you're part of this New Jersey team that was kind of rebuilding and like kind of exiting its rebuild um, last season. What was it like kind of last year to, to see this taste of this, you know, finally get some success for a New Jersey team that had been rebuilding for a long time and but seeing kind of the fruit bear for that? Yeah, I mean uh, it was it was a fun season. Uh we started good. Uh we we had some some huge wins at the beginning and then the train just kept going. Uh we were just playing unreal. Uh we didn't have that many injuries. Uh mm-hmm. pretty much everyone was healthy and we would just yeah, we played uh, we had a good chemistry in the group and everything and uh, all the guys knew their roles too, and uh, yeah, every guy, every guy chipped in, and uh, yeah, we just uh, had a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, on that way it was. Uh, Jack Hughes, he's pretty good at hockey, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, uh, yeah, he's one of the silkiest guy in the league. Uh, his hands is uh, is uh, something else. I know how I, it's crazy how all three of the Hughes brothers are just like really good. I know Luke Hughes has got a little bit to go to kind of get there, but like Quinn Hughes is, you know, in the conversation for Norris. I know Jack Hughes has had a little bit of injury trouble this year, but he's probably going to be an MVP one day. Uh, they're just pumping out uh, the Hughes family, just pumping out hockey players, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, uh, mom and dad are doing a great job. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I talked to his dad once and he was like, uh, He's a nice guy too. Uh, mm. So yeah, I mean uh, they're all uh, like really good hockey players, and now the third one is in the NHL too. So uh, just happy for them. Um, of course, there was a trade that brought you to San Jose. Did you have any idea what was that kind of day like for you? I mean, uh, of course, you saw some rumors and stuff about uh, Timo Meyer, uh, and then. Uh, I mean, you didn't really know, like, if you were going to be in that trade or, like, mm-hmm. if someone else. Uh, but, yeah, um, I remember the GM called me and he's like, you're you're going to San Jose. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I was just packing all my stuff and just uh, went on the fly, flight the, the day after. So it was, it was quick, yeah, but it was easier than I thought. And uh, uh, they helped me a lot. So it was uh, it was easy. Uh, I'm sure because like if I remember that day, there was kind of the news that Timo had gotten traded in the morning, at least on the West Coast time. But we didn't get the details until like pretty late in the afternoon. I think it was like six o'clock when the actual news broke. So I know there was a lot of moving pieces with so many. Is it you're just kind of holding your breath all day or I assume you kind of get the you know, a little bit ahead of time, but just kind of waiting to see who's coming with you and who's coming back. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know. I was just, 
I just knew I was the guy. And then, but I, I knew, knew we had some other guys, but I didn't know which one, you know. And, which one? And then, and then I saw, yeah, Johnson and uh, Nikita uh, and Shakir. So I was just, oh, nice guys, you know. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, we, we spoke a little bit on the phone too uh, when we saw that. And uh, just to see if everyone like needs help with anything or something. So yeah, it was great. Yeah, I know Shakir is, is I know Sharks fans have been waiting for Shakir and it's it's been we started getting a taste of him and he looks like he's gonna be really good. I, I know we're as Sharks fans, we're pretty excited for him. So uh you come over and you get in, and I would I would assume it probably wasn't the start you wanted for last year when you came to San Jose. Um how is it just maybe kind of going from a team like the Devils, right? Where it was really fun to kind of go into a Sharks team that was uh fair to say it was they were a struggling team last year. Just how was kind of that mental aspect of it? Yeah, I mean it. It wasn't it wasn't easy. Um, mm-hmm. um, it was hard times. Uh, I wanted more, uh, but uh, sometimes you have to find yourself too, you know. And and uh, I want to produce and everything like that, you know. And uh, yeah, it just uh, didn't work out. Uh, and uh, I worked hard every day uh, for it, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's uh, it's not there. And you, I mean. You know, yeah, you kind of have to keep keep working and keep battling for it, and uh, that's what I did when I when the year end. I went to to World Worlds, played there mm-hmm. uh, in Finland, and uh, I felt I felt I felt good when I uh, played that tournament, and uh, I had a huge summer too. And uh, yeah, um, one the probably the most positive thing about last year for San Jose was of course, uh, Eric Carlson, uh, who won the Norris and was, you jumped in kind of in the middle of his pursuit for hundred points. Uh, how crazy is just watching Eric Carlson do Eric Carlson things on a night in night out by, basis. Yeah. When I got traded, that was one of the guy I wanted to, uh, to meet and uh, to see him on the ice, uh, in that action. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when I came and saw him, it was, it was, uh, you can see he's a Hall of Famer, like future Hall of Famer, and he's uh, so good at like the stuff he does out there. And uh, uh, of course, uh, hundred points for a demon is uh, is pretty good. So uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I was just happy for him, and uh, yeah, he, it's it's great to see a guy like that. Um, this season, like you kind of mentioned, right? You, you've you've put in a lot of work this summer, and you're having that breakout season. I I, I would. Fair to say it's your breakout season, right? What do you think has been kind of behind behind it? I mean, I had a huge summer. Uh, they want to sign me again, and I was I was happy about it because I knew I have more to show. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> so I just came into this season, uh, just relaxed, start the season from beginning training camp and everything. So, uh, I just took it from there, and then just worked, you know, and. Uh, yeah, got more confidence uh, after uh, every day. So uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, nice to, to get going from the beginning with the team. Yeah. Um, is Anthony Duclair the coolest person ever? Because he seems like he's the coolest person. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He died, he's been took care of me so good this year. So yeah, he's he's definitely one of the coolest. Yeah. Yeah, he just it seems like no matter like on the ice, off the ice, he just seems like a cool guy, uh, no matter what. Yeah. Um, we had some kind of big news, of course. Tomas Hurdle is going to be out for a couple of weeks. Uh, he's having knee, uh, had a knee surgery, and then Logan Gator, who just came back and is now going to be out for a couple of weeks as well. Uh, what's it mean to lose both these guys, especially when it felt like the sh- you guys might start finally getting healthy here? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, you know. Uh, uh, Hurdle has been like it's been so much for this team, you know. He's been playing really good this season, even if we the team haven't been that great all the time. But he's been one of us leading the team, you know, and in, in points and uh, like producing like everything like that, and be happy outside the ring too and stuff. Uh, it's tough to lose a guy like that, you know. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's someone you want to have still have in the lineup, uh, but yeah, uh, nothing we can really do about it now and. Same with Cooch. Like uh, it's been so so good this year. Uh, battled through that, you know, and been uh, just happy every day when he's, when we meet him at the rink. You know, he's chit chatting with the guys and just be be the captain he is, you know. And uh, yeah, I mean, he played well when he got back too, and 
yeah, unfortunately, he's he's not uh, he's out right now. But uh, hopefully, they both back soon. All right, guys, before we finish up with Zetelin, uh, we get to know him off the ice a little bit. I asked him about the abs. How did the ab work out? He doesn't tell me much, but uh, I had to try. So before we get into with Zetelin, just need to take a quick break. It's past the halfway point of the season, Sharks fans. I know it has been a tough one, but regardless of the Sharks' current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick some of your favorite players, whether they're NHL superstars like McDavid, Crosby, or McKinnon, or some of your favorite Sharks like Fabian Zetterlin, uh, Slippery Pete, Mikhail Granlin. Record more or less than a sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, and plus, minus, and more in a given game. Uh, 20, 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Sharks fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL. You'll get hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's locked on NHL. You see sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Uh, I have to talk to you about Eklund because uh, on this podcast we love William Eklund. Um, it seems like you guys have gotten to get, uh, gotten along really well. Uh, are you kind of taking that big brother role for him, and you know, kind of being a little bit older than him? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm trying, and uh, yeah, I think he's he's jumping on it too. And uh, yeah, when we when we start the season, we just hang out every day, and uh, we're still doing it right now. And uh, we probably will at the rest of the season, the rest like of our uh, carries too. You know, uh, we we close close. Uh, I mean, we're really close, and we cook dinner together, and you know, like. Uh, always uh, FaceTiming or like hanging out in the couch watching movies and stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's a great, he's a great kid. I call him kid. Yeah. It's like three <laughs> years difference, but yeah. Uh, great kid. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, I mean, as you know, you're a professional player, you, you've kind of been around for a little bit. Uh, what do you see in Eklund? What should Sharks fans be excited about for Eklund and his future kind of as he's really starting to figure things out this year? Yeah, I mean, right now he's playing centerman and he's doing it really well. So uh, uh, if he can play that on this, like centerman on this level, that would be great. And uh, I think uh, if he can go to the wing and uh, be flexible like that, he will be even more usable out there. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, he's a big part of this future and uh, he's just getting better every day. I, I can see that too. So yeah, it's it's just fun to watch him. Um, you and Eklund coached the uh, San Francisco Earthquakes before the big the Sharks Pride Day. Um, I know you were the coach. He was the assistant coach from uh, what I re- read. Um, how important do you think it is to kind of be an, an ally? Uh, and then also especially coming from the Bay Area where mm-hmm. I think Pride takes a little bit more uh, center stage. He's, uh, Eki is calling me right now. Though. I have to cancel this <laughs> You can put them on uh, the freeway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's uh, nice to give something back, you know, too. And uh, 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 it's nice to give something back for the fans, you know. Like that's all we can do, you know. <clears throat> they they've been so good for, for us, and like we everything we can do for them is just uh, it's just a bonus, and uh, we love to doing it too. And uh, small things like that, it's just uh, make them make them their life you know and that's uh that's what our point is too and uh yeah all right i'll let's have some fun here ask some questions kind of get to know you a little bit off the ice uh first off can you drop the ab workout because uh the photos of you without a shirt it looks like you're a superhero so what goes into the the, the ab workout <laughs> Uh, you can call my personal coach uh, and talk about it. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of power, like speed and uh, just body in shape. I don't know. Just uh, not really a key for it. Just uh, eat a lot of food and just be be a professional. There's a there's an Instagram photo of you with a dog on the beach, uh, like getting out of the water. And yeah, that one is, I showed my wife that and she like did like, Oh my, uh, photo when she saw it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, good. 
Good time Good. too. That means it's working. So um, the Sharks, of course, dropped their their new black sweaters. I know you guys are gonna be debuting them here soon. What is what was your thoughts when you saw them? I uh, great. Uh, I think they're actually really nice. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to play with them. Yeah, for sure. I like the uh, the teeth and the collar. I think it's just a nice little touch there. The little like the teeth yeah, and the collar. Yeah, it is. yeah. yeah, I agree. It's, Oh, yeah, I like when just those little things. I like when when teams do that. So, um, yeah. question for as the Sharks kind of continue their rebuild yeah. here and trying to do they need more Luns? You have you, you have uh, Mikael Granlin, Eklund. You have, I don't know if you've met Cam Lun, the Sharks prospect um, from the second. Do the, is that the key to the Sharks' success? Is just more Luns on the team? Yeah, just bring the bring every lounge you find over there. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean it's we got a, a lot of lounge now. It's uh, it's just fun. Uh, I haven't really thought about it that much, but uh, when when you said it, it sounds funny. So yeah, bring in some more Europeans for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All the Europeans, um, yeah, you can't go wrong. Um, what does your game day prep look like? Are you a superstitious guy, a little stitious guy, or let it flow type of guy? I'm uh, kind of pretty soft on that. Uh, I have my routines, uh, my mm-hmm. nap routines, eat the same food and uh, and all those kind of stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm just uh, when I come to the ring, I'm pretty soft. I just uh, I do the same stuff, but I'm just I joke around and like try to have fun too, you know. And uh, when the puck drops, I'm I'm just ready. So it's it works out so well. Are you a coffee before a game guy? Coffee and an oko, yeah. My own drink I have back home in Sweden. So coffee. Uh iced or hot or just kinda of depends on the weather. Uh you mean the coffee? Yeah. No, always uh normal black coffee. Uh, hot. That's the correct answer. Uh iced coffee is the worst. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> <laughs> um socks and skates. Uh are you a monster who does not wear socks with your skates? I wear socks. Uh, those people who don't wear socks, they're weird people, right? Yeah, they wear. <laughs> you, is there I, I, mean, like, I, I don't know. I don't know how they can do it. I, I would. I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, Ryan Merkley, I know he didn't wear. He said it's more comfortable. Once you break it in, it's more comfortable. But is there anybody on the team now that doesn't wear socks and skates? I think Blackwood uh, doesn't wear it. I don't know. They're goalies. I, goalies are weird anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. <they're- laughs> You have to use. You have to be really out there to just uh, stand, like let frozen rubber come flying at you at 100 miles an hour. So, um, yeah. <laughs> all right, get you out of your last couple ones here. So, I mean, you played New Jersey. You're from Sweden. Uh, what's the Bay Area weather like for you here? I mean, it's awesome. Uh, just uh, walking around with uh, you can walk around with shorts every day. It's it's perfect, you know, and uh, yeah, this is feel like my home right now. So it's uh, it's great. All right, and then we'll get you out of here on this. When uh, you're not on the ice, what's your favorite activity to do? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, beating uh, Eklund in uh, ping pong. Ah, oh, the smack talk. All right. Uh, Fabian, thank you so much for your time. Uh, best luck the rest of the season. And I uh, hope to see you continue to have the awesome that you've been having, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, special thanks to the San Jose Sharks and Fabian Zetterlin for joining the show. Um, Zetterlin has really... Like he said, he had a really nice uh, summer and has really come in here and trying to kind of taken advantage of the opportunity he's been given. It's exciting to see kind of what he can be as the Sharks continue kind of this rebuild and what type of piece he can be. So especially if, if he's the big brother to all the Swedes, more power to him. Love to see it. Seems like an would be an awesome big brother. So uh, again, special thanks to the Sharks uh, and Zettelin for making this happen. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with good friend Shang Peng. Uh, so we'll, we got a fun game that we're going to be playing with him. So make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked On Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Until tomorrow. Bye, friends. <laughs>